So here's something I wasn't expecting. Um, we've had some severe storms over the last couple of days and uh, <laughs> it's taken out the beach. There's no beach left. I mean, all this, yeah, it's, it's crazy. I'll show you sort of just what I'm looking at here. Uh, it's, um, wow, normally this is quite slow. Yeah, the entire beach is slow, but as you can see, I've got a, a wall of sand right here. Now, <laughs> this is the same all along this uh, part of the beach, which is insane. It just means that this ocean has come through so ferociously through the storms, just washed out what was a beach. <laughs> uh, this is your plans versus nature's plans. Yeah, things change. <laughs> like, you get back up here, so at some point. This is insane. It's kind of fitting for. <laughs> I just tried to all the stairways. I, I don't know if you can see that, but all the stairways that sort of led down to the beach, they're all washed away. Like, this is. This is Truly is crazy. Alright, I was not expecting that, quite honestly. Uh, I just thought I'd come out here and do a little bit of a walk and share some of my thoughts about, you know, things I've got planned uh, for the rest of the year. But this actually is perfect for me to talk about that because one of my big plans that I had was to run a 50 kilometer run unsupported. Now I've, I've not run 50 kilometers before, so this would definitely be something new for me. Uh, and then also to do it uh, unsupported uh, would also be a challenge in itself. I done some research on this uh, route along the Durban South Coast. Um, from Port Shepston to Kelso. Now, on that route, there's a, there's a railway that's not in use anymore. Um, and, and that was my, my plan. I, I sort of researched quite a bit into this and I thought, cool, I'm going to run along this railway line and try to tell stories about the different towns that I come across. Well, plans changed because I, I went out to the South Coast uh, a little while back and I actually did some research on the railway line. I actually ran a little bit of this track uh, as part of a 15 kilometer run I did around uh, the McNichol. And I found portions of it just to be, you know, unrunnable. So there was no way through. There were, uh, there were places where the actual neighborhoods had closed off the railway. I'm not sure how legal that is, but anyway, it's closed uh, and there were also portions that weren't safe. They didn't look safe because they were behind sort of townships and access to those might not be easy. And while people in townships are really nice, there's always one or two little elements or you know, people that just spoil it for everyone else. And, and that, to me, carrying a pack with, you know, some tick on me, uh, sometimes I would run with a drone. I just wasn't willing to, to risk it and it just felt uncomfortable. So not having your plans work out is sometimes life. You know, it's out of your hands. I did uh, also, I thought running along a railway track <laughs> would be really difficult because after my experience uh, to the short distance that I ran, that was that was actually extremely tough um so so there's that part of it i mean it was gorgeous it was absolutely gorgeous but it was so very tough and to do that 50 kilometers for me maybe sometime next year i'll try that but i don't know but what i did do is i tried to think of what other things can i do if I'm not going to do that 50 kilometer run, which did bum me out for a while. Like with this, you know, 
it's out of your control. It's not in my control that neighbors had cut off part of that railway line. At least I, as I went out and I checked first instead of just showing up to none on the day. You know, I even went to the, the Port Shepston uh, railway station to the start and it was this uh, old relic of a, of a train, a diesel train standing there. So it looked in pretty good shape. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the area did not. <laughs> but still, being there, I, I, I felt I put all, all the work in to, to make it as a successful run as possible, but it just wasn't going to work. But now, I've set my sights on... You know, the Drakensberg. The Drakensberg is not far from where I live. And I've got some runs planned up in the Drakensberg. All of those I'll start filming in the next few weeks. And hopefully we'll have a fantastic uh, summer season of content with me in the Drakensberg. Some beautiful scenery. So that's exciting. That's opened up some excitement for me. So just because something, you know, has happened... That's derailed your plans. Whether it be by nature or whether it just be by circumstances, I'm hoping that that doesn't completely um, put you off doing the thing. Like if you plan to go for a walk and it's raining, maybe go for a walk in the rain. I've walked in the rain and run in the rain. And quite honestly, like in the beginning, it can be, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's rain. So it's not excited about doing it, but like I've had many runs in the rain now and they all ended up like this this feeling it's very hard to explain of like accomplishment it's not that I enjoyed the running in the rain now maybe I do but the, the the sense of accomplishment of doing something that seemed really really difficult was it's like it's so much more it's un, I can't explain it and so maybe that's something you know that if you face challenges and now something gets in your way and it sort of derails your plans or like, yeah, just try to push through and and find the next thing. Sure, you could be bummed out. There's nothing wrong with being bummed out about stuff like that. But maybe it's opened up an opportunity for new and exciting things that you didn't think of before. I didn't think of running in the Drakensberg, but now I cannot wait to get out there and just to see the amazing opportunities for running, for trails, for walks, because, <laughs> I mean, it's steep and it's uphill. And when I did Table Mountain, it was, uh, there was there was a lot of walking as well. <laughs> but sure, go out there and enjoy yourself. I mean, that's the main thing is that, you know, shoot your shot, take your chances, lift yourself up. Oh. I recently just hit 100 subscribers and I want to say thank you to every single one of you that watched my videos, that like, subscribe and have commented. This is a real big milestone for me. I know 100 subscribers is not a lot. That's not a big number. But for me, it, it means everything. It means that it's all worth it. Doing these videos is a lot of work. But it's, it's fun work, not difficult fun. So if you're one of those people, I want to say thank you. If you're new, this is your first video. Welcome, my name's Richard. And yeah, I talk about running, I talk about motivation in life. You know, life after 40, <laughs> if you can call it that. But it's really just to try and inspire people that says, I do things, some of those things are really, really hard, but I try it anyway. I don't finish top sometimes in the bottom three or four, <laughs> but man, I, I, I enjoy trying. And I really want to encourage you to try Things that you thought you never could do before. If you found this message inspiring or maybe you have a friend that you think needs to hear something like this or they share these points of view, I'd really appreciate if you share this video with them. And if you think it's de deserving, I'd, I'd really like a like. If you can like the video, that would be great. I mean, it's absolutely free for you to do. But for me, it means the world. So again, thank you so much to all of you. My name's Richard, and this has been Richard Talks.